England Motorcycle Museum, and I'm here with Scott Serafin. Scott, how are you today? Great. Thank you. Doing, Thank you very much. Thank you for preserving this uh, beautiful example of the Kawasaki H2750 Mach 4. This is a three-cylinder two-stroke. Scott bought this, believe it or not, brand new in December of 1974 when he was 18 years old. Scott is now 60, 62. 62. And he's owned this bike for, what, 43? 43 years. 43 years he's owned this beauty. Yeah. And it's an original can survivor. He's never dropped the bike. Um, it's all original except for the rear shocks and the, he upgraded to the K&N style air filters. And uh, it's an absolutely beautiful bike. Scott, you, um, you've only put 10,000 miles on this bike. I guess being in New England is part of that, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of good times on it. Um, hate to see it go, but it's just a part of my life we have to deal with. So. Well, we, we certainly uh, rarely, if ever, have somebody deliver a, a, a pristine H2750 right to the door like this, and uh, never have, have I bought one from an original owner. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's just a real pleasure uh, to deal with you and to have this beautiful piece of moto history show up at the museum here. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope uh, one of our benefactors buys it and, and keeps it here in the museum. Jennifer, you're going to make some phone calls for me? I will. Okay. I absolutely will. Awesome. So uh, hopefully it'll stay here in the museum forever. Um, I have the title. Uh, Scott, check this out. Uh, he bought this in uh, 1974, December of 74. The title came to him January 31st of 75. Original title, signed on the back by him. I actually have the license plate from 1984. I'm 52. That's the year I graduated high school. That, that's the original plate. That was just a registration sticker. That yep. was one of so, the latest. So, so this was an original 1974 plate. Uh, the bike's in much better shape than the plate. But I've been sitting in his garage on the shelf because he had an antique plate on it. For How long did you have the antique plate on it? Um, I'm not, I, I, I think about five years. So uh, congratulations on uh, a lifetime of maintaining this, this beauty and uh, I hope it goes to somebody who enjoys it as much as you have. Yep. It even has the original grips on it, which is pretty pretty amazing. Original mirrors, original grips. Thank you so much. Yep. God bless you very much. It goes to a good home. Yes, hopefully it stays right here with us. Is what I'm, I've got my fingers crossed. So boys, <laughs> please step up. Buy this one for the museum. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Thanks. finest 74 H2750 we've ever had here and the finest one I've seen come up for sale in years. Rare, original, one owner bike. You'll hear from the owner later in the video. He himself was here yesterday, gave us a quick interview on his history of the bike and uh, we have full provenance on this bike. We have the original title from uh, December of 1974 when he purchased the bike. He was 18 years old when he bought it and he was 62 years old when he sold it to us, he kept it for a lifetime. He's retiring and moving to Maine and uh, decided to part with this beauty and bought it to the New England Motorcycle Museum where we hope it stays for eternity. Um, it's being sold to raise revenues for the museum. Uh, we hope one of our benefactors will step up and buy it and, and leave it here at the museum. It's a fantastic piece of moto history. And uh, if you know anything about these H2750 triples, You'll know that this Mach 4 model was the last and final version of it, and it had all the refinements that they had worked out over the previous years. This particular model has a longer swing arm, the factory steering dampener, the engine was tuned a little bit differently. They were notorious for being wheelie machines. So uh, they had worked out some of the bugs, and this was the best bike to buy in 1974. This, was, this bike won Cycle World Shootout, the 75 shootout of all the super bikes of that era. It was the fastest motorcycle from zero to 100 in just over 13 seconds. It pulled a 12 second quarter mile, flat 12 second quarter mile right out of the box. And it had the best track manners. Um, I'll grab some of the literature and I'll show you the title of the bike. Scott Serafin bought this bike in 1974 when he was 18 years old as a Christmas present to himself. And what a present, it gave him a lifetime of fun and memories. Uh, three kids he raised and uh, entire career. He kept this bike, this was the one constant, and he kept it in pristine condition, stored it indoors in his heated basement, uh, drive-in basement, and the bike is in absolutely spectacular condition. The nicest 
original 74. I've seen this bike is 100% original, right down to the hand grips. The paint job is original. The only items that aren't original on the bike are the rear shocks, uh, which I have a set of these coming, which will be available separately. If you want to buy the stock shocks, we'll have them. The um, airbox boot, uh, the stock airbox boot, I have one of those, a brand new airbox boot. So if you want to put the stock boot on, that can you'll get that also. Uh, so the tires are not the original tires. This is the second set of tires. The bike only has 10,500 miles on it. We bought this bike again in December of 74. Here's the original certificate of ownership, the original title. Um, let's pull it up again. This is uh, uh, 19, January of 1975 to, to uh, Fred S. Serafin. S is his middle name, Scott. Everybody calls him Scott. Scott bought this bike brand new. And it didn't show in the video, but he had tears in his eyes when he walked up because it was the end of a lifetime love affair he had with his motorcycle. And he's moving on to a new chapter as, as a retiree. But uh, this is the first original owner H2750 I've ever had the chance of purchasing in, in 30 years of doing this. Uh, this is the finest one we've seen come through the museum. If you look on our YouTube channel, you'll see there's another one. We just sold a purple one that wasn't uh, stock pipes and it had some other modifications. That one sold for $14,500. Uh, this bike here has an estimated value of around $16,000. Uh, it's one of the rare few final survivors of the H2 era that is unmolested and original. Um, good luck finding a nicer one. The, uh, this is the H2 Mop 4, as I mentioned. This one was the final version. It's a 750cc three-cylinder two-stroke, and it was known as king of the streets. Stock, again, a 12-second quarter mile and it handled better than the Mach 3 that uh, preceded it. Uh, it's handling was sufficient to make it a production bike to beat on the racetrack. It had a tendency to pull wheelies, which led to some adjustments on the Mach 4, including the, the, the extended swing arm from the factory, it was a little longer than the Mach 3. More than any other model, it created Kawasaki's reputation for, for building what motorcycle journalist Alastair Walker called scarily fast, good looking, no holds barred motorcycles. And let this motorcycle led to the further decline in the marketplace of the British and American motorcycles. It put, it put a, the final nail in the coffin of, of a Brit, some British manufacturers and also put a big hurt on Harley Davidson. Uh, this bike is the original candy gold paint. If you look at this paint job, um, what you'll note on this paint job is from certain angles it looks black. Why does it look black? Well, if you do your research online, you'll see this is a four coat process. The base coat is actually gloss black. So there's gloss black and uh, the second coat is a flare silver pearl. So it's gloss black. Look, check, look at this. Look at this. Just, it's, just hold it there for a second. It's gorgeous. Gloss black is on the base coat. And then on top of that, it's a flare silver pearl. And then they laid down a coat of candy yellow. So in the sunlight, it just looks. In the sunlight, it, it almost looks green. They call it candy gold, but it's a, it's a black base coat. And from my office chair across the room here, the bike looks black to me and the center patch looks orange. But out in the sun, you can see the candy gold, uh, the, um, the flare silver pearl. So again, it's a gloss black with flare silver pearl and candy yellow, and then clear coat on top of that. So a very rare uh, original Survivor. The original paint is in spectacular condition, as is the rest of the bike. But this bike has never been dropped. Um, the original exhaust pipe is in excellent condition. If you take a close look, you can see there's no, no damage on the side of the pipe, no rust. It's in excellent original condition. Um, one little tiny scratch right here on the, uh, that'll probably uh, buff out. Um, it's got a little bit of black on it. Um, this bike came in here yesterday from Scott. We haven't done anything to this bike. This is exactly the way it came in. We're a restoration shop. We've done nothing to this bike. This is exactly the way it rolled in the showroom. The, um, this bike uh, originally was based off the 1971 H1. Uh, they, the first model of the H2 came out in 71. It was a direct success of the 500cc Kawasaki Triple. But unlike the H1, the 70 had much more low end engine speed torque with a strong burst of power starting at 3,500 RPM to the 7,500 RPM red, red line. I took this on a nice ride yesterday, a little bit longer than I normally take. And this morning I took it out for a ride and it pulls like a freight train. This three cylinder two stroke has a ton of torque. 
And uh, if you look closely at the side panels, you see the original paint is in beautiful condition. The original H2 was the bike that pioneered the, the look of the race tail rear end here. And in 1974, it was slimmed down a little bit. It also afforded a little bit of space for the storage of the original toolkit, which is included with this motorcycle. You also get the, not only the title, but the original toolkit. The H2 was a blazing success and is a, one of the hottest collector's items from that era today. The reason it was a success, there was no other bikes that could even approach the performance of the H2 Mod 4. 12 seconds in, quarter mile, and uh, 0 to 100 miles per hour in 13 seconds. The H2 was compared, comparison tested by Cycle Magazine in 73 against the Ducati 750, the Honda 750, the Harley Davidson Sportster 1000, the Kawasaki Z1, the Triumph Trident 750, and the Norton Commando. The competition consisted of acceleration, braking, distance, and road race course lap times. Each test was run several times, including 10 attempts at a fastest road course time. The H2 was the fastest accelerating machine, posting the fastest quarter mile on a drag strip. Experts were surprised at the other results. It also had the shortest, shortest stopping distance and highest braking G-load of all the bikes. On the road course, it was tied for the fastest lap time with the Kawasaki Z1 to the tenth of a second. Overall, the H2 750 had the lowest ET, the second highest quarter mile speed, the fastest lap time, the strongest braking force, the highest torque and horsepower readings, and fastest lap time. The, the, uh, on the dy dynamometer, it had the highest power to weight ratio the lowest price and scored by points for its performance, it was by far the best machine per unit displacement. So Kawasaki's reputation for building what motorcycle rider Alistair Walker called scarily fast, good looking, no hold barred super bikes began with the H2. The H2 was part of the rise of the Japanese super bikes, contributing to the decline of Harley Davidson, and as I said earlier, really distinguished the British motorcycle industry in the US for a long period. So that's the history of the H2. This bike here, um, is an original Survivor, uh, the finest example I've seen in a long, long time. The cosmetics of this bike are just off the hook. Starting at the gas tank, this is absolutely the cleanest H2 gas tank I've ever seen, inside and out. There's not a single ding on it. And Kenny was talking earlier about it's kind of like having an egg for 43 years that you carefully protect and maintain and to walk around without cracking it. And that's exactly what you have here. This thing avoided being damaged for almost 50 years and the finish on it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the front fender is in, be in beautiful condition. I don't see a, a, a single ding on the front fender. The, the chrome on the front forks is like, like NOS beautiful. The front rim, there's no uh, pitting on the chrome on the rim. This is a bike that was loved for and cared for by the same man its entire life. The front brakes are in beautiful condition. The, the chrome on the exhaust pipes is gorgeous on the front. Nicest set of H2 750 original pipes I've seen that aren't reproduction pipes. The um, KH170 H2 um, insignia is on there. These are the original factory pipes are in beautiful condition. The um, side covers look like they just came out of the out of the factory box, brand new. They're in beautiful shape. The cylinder heads are in great shape. The side covers are beautiful. Uh, the pegs never been dropped. Uh, no damage to the shifter, no damage anywhere on the side of the bike. Original buddy pegs are in great shape. The factory seat is in impeccable condition. Uh, the rear tailpiece is beautiful, as is the grab bar. The um, rear original rear tail ends. Um, the second tire that's been on the bike since it was new has about 50% of the tread left. The um, front tire, uh, which is the second tire to ever be on the bike, has 80% of the tread left. So the, again, the only items I found on this bike that are not stock are the, rear, are the tires and the shocks. The, um, air, the air boot, we have a brand new air boot. So uh, if you want that, that, you can have that and put that on yourself. Um, the bike is in absolutely gorgeous shape. It starts up first kick. One, one improvement he did add to it is he did add shutoffs. This is a vacuum controlled uh, petcock and he added manual shutoffs. If you don't like those, uh, those can be easily replaced with an inline fuel filter. But that's just uh, keep uh, gas from getting in the carburetors and the bike's not running. So um, these K&N air filters are, are definitely better breathers in stock. I'd leave them on there, but if you want to make it uh, museum original, go ahead, put the stock rubber boot on there and put the shocks on there. Like I said, we have a set. Uh, there's a couple on eBay for uh, $50, $75. Um, I've got a set lined up 
that uh, if you want them, we can get them for about 100 bucks as a stock shock. So we're offering the stock shocks separately. In the, separately, yeah. The, the original air boot is coming with it, Kent. The original air boot comes with the bike. So the shocks were upgraded to a Coney style uh, gas shock that's far superior than the stock one. But if you want the stock ones, they're available on eBay for about $100, not an expensive item. Uh, the expensive part is the the um, original stock exhaust, the, the factory paint job, the beautiful seat. Those are the irreplaceable items. Even has the original grips again. The gauges, the tachometer and speedometer, look like they just came out of the box, perfectly clear. No blemishes anywhere on the tacker speedo that I can see, they look gorgeous. So, um, front headlight, perfectly straight, not a scratch on it, as are the, um, the um, ears for the headlights. So, uh, I think the videos and the pictures um, tell the story, but if you have any other questions or if you want to come see the bike yourself, give us a call, 860-454. 7024. This is the finest H2750 that's come up on eBay in over a year. The last nicest one was the one we sold, the purple one. It bought $14,500, but it was highly modified, didn't have the stock exhaust on it or anything like that. And the full provenance was unknown on that bike. This one's an original owner, 100% stock, fantastic machine. This bike is going to be offered to the benefactors of the New England Motorcycle Museum. There is a buy it now price on the bike also. We reserve the right, right to sell it offline to one of our benefactors. Hopefully they'll buy it and leave it here in the museum. So if you want this bike, don't hesitate. Click buy it now and secure your piece of moto history because you're not going to find another one in original paint or condition like this. This is a fantastic machine. Kenny, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add? I think you said it, Ken. All right, so... There's not going to be another opportunity, and once it's gone, it's gone. Lord knows when another one's going to go up for sale on your eBay. So. And, and the price is extremely reasonable. Uh, Z1s are regularly, of the same era, are regularly bringing over $20,000, and so aren't the 750 Honda. So the asking price is extremely reasonable. So good luck bidding on the bike. If you have any questions, give us a call at 860-454-7024. Again, the proceeds are going to fund the New England Motorcycle Museum. So you're not only buying this fantastic piece of moto history, you're also helping support the museum. So with that, I'm going to roll her back in the museum where she will hopefully reside forever. Someone from another country or uh, outside of Connecticut buys it. Good luck with it. We wish you the best of luck. God bless America and God bless the new owner of this motorcycle. I'm going to fire her up. Ride her one more time. This will be the last time this bike's ridden until the new owner gets the title to it. There's no exhaust on this thing, it's just magic.